This lesson covers installing roles and features using PowerShell. Even though I'm dealing with both roles and features, there's actually a single command lip, and it's related to the noun of Windows feature. So to check the various command lips available, I can do get command, where the noun is Windows feature. And here you can see I can do add, remove, get, install, and uninstall. So the first thing is to do git windows feature. And notice I could get specific features. I could do it for a remote machine. I could do it from a virtual hard disk file. I could pass an alternate credential that's gonna be required if I'm using a remote machine. And my current account does not have the necessary level of permission. But if I just run git windows feature, it will show me all of the roles and features available, starting with the roles first. I scroll up to the top of the output, and then once all the roles have been shown, it then starts on the features, starting with the .NET Framework 3.5. It also gives me the name that it is referred to using PowerShell. It shows me the status. If there's a checkbox, it means it's installed, and it will also show as installed in the state column. It will show me if it's available, i.e. the bits are actually on the local operating system. If I look at something like .NET 3.5, I can see it's actually removed. It's not available on the file system. So if I actually wanted to use .NET 3.5 and install that, I would have to give that alternate source to install it. To install a feature is very simple. I use install Windows feature and then the name of that feature. For example, here I can see WAS, W-A-S. When I select that, you'll notice that the Windows Process Activation Service has some optional components, sub-features. If I want those, I can just say include all sub-features. There also may be management tools, so I can also say include management tools. If I wanted, I could target a remote machine. I could say a computer name. I could also target a VHD file. I could pass a credential. Now I don't want to execute on this system, but if I just do what if, it would show me what it would do. And what it would do is install all those components. It would install the required parts of .NET, and I would now have that service available to me. Remember we exported that configuration file earlier from Server Manager. Well, to use that, I do install Windows Feature, configuration file, and then the XML file exported. If I want to install to multiple computers, the easiest way is to actually just create an array of the servers. So I could say servers equals savdal dco1, comma, savdal dco2. So my two domain controllers. And then I simply want to run an install for multiple machines. So I could say, well, for each server in servers, so servers is an array of multiple machines. I can just say install the Windows feature, whatever I want to do, let's say WAS, and the computer name is dollar server. What if go? So it would go through and install that on the multiple machines. I can also use remove Windows feature exactly the same way to remove features from a local box, from a remote box. Now, if we go all the way back to our Windows feature list of commands, you'll notice there was an uninstall and an install option. One of the things I can do in Windows Server 2012 R2 is actually remove a role or feature from the disk footprint. Ordinarily, everything is stored in the side-by-side -side assembly, so it's readily available if I want to install it. Generally, disk space is not a pain point for most machines today. But imagine I was trying to get a footprint as small as possible. Now, I want to actually remove it from the disk if I'm not using it. Well, that's exactly what uninstall Windows feature does. It will actually remove it from the disk footprint. If I look at my Windows features again, if I knew I didn't want Wins anymore, I could actually use the uninstall Windows feature wins, and then I add the remove switch. So this is now actually taking all of the files from the side-by-side -side assembly and removing them from the disk footprints. This will actually shrink my OS installation. If I do git windows feature again, 
Now I can see Wins is removed. I could be very extreme with this. Imagine I wanted to try and get a machine as small as possible. Now, I would advise against this. This really is an extreme example. Now I'm going to look again at all my features. And this time I want to look at all of the ones, we'll say where, dollar underscores that represents each of the objects passed along the pipeline. Installed is not equal to installed, i.e. I'm not using that feature. So let's just run that. So I have all of these other things on the disk footprint that are not installed. Well, I could actually say uninstall the Windows feature, remove. And I'm going to do what if, because I don't want it to do that. But what it would actually do is go through and remove every single role and feature from that box that is not currently installed. So if I installed everything I wanted, I had the box configured how I needed it, and now I wanted to shrink the disk footprint as much as possible, I could run that. And then of course, there's the install Windows feature commandlet, which is really gonna do the opposite. If I uninstall removes it from the disk footprint, then install Windows feature will add them onto the box. And again, I don't need to use install, I can just use add Windows feature, and I would specify an alternate source if I had removed it from the disk footprint. The regular add Windows feature would not function because I've removed it from the disk. So if I've removed something from disk, I would have to specify a source where I could get the files from, a side-by-side -side assembly of another machine, an extracted Windows installation, or a WIM file.